Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm co-host with Richard Emery uh, of this show. And uh, what we do in our show is we talk about condominium living and how it affects uh, the people who live, work, and uh, play uh, in these uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, condominium community. And today, I'm going to give you an update on the fire safety um, ordinance that was uh, enacted as a result of the Marco Polo fire, uh, that horrific fire that um, happened in July of 2017. And the purpose of the fire safety or ordinance uh, was uh, to make sure that in the future, that people who lived in high-rise uh, buildings, uh, that the buildings were safer for the residents and uh, safer for the uh, emergency first responders who have to uh, uh, respond to fires and other emergency situations in the condominiums. And you know, uh, the the, the uh, fire safety um, ordinance uh, was first enacted, and it became effective in May of 2018. In fact, it was May 3, 2018. So we're coming up on a one-year anniversary soon. And that bill, in a nutshell, basically said that there were about 350 to 400 buildings in Honolulu, high-rise buildings, and it defined high-rise buildings. And it affects high-rise residential buildings, not high-rise uh, high uh, biz uh, business or commercial, just high-rise residential. Anyway, uh, this ordinance uh, required all high-rise buildings, residential buildings, to be retrofitted with fire sprinklers, except if they were 10 stories, less than 10 stories, or had open exterior corridors. And open exterior corridors means that when you walk out of your condominium unit and there's air, there's not a wall, it's not enclosed. The, the, in, uh, the corridor uh, between uh, your unit and the rest of the building is open to the air. That is an open exterior uh, corridor. So if you have those types, if, if, that, if, if your building has open exterior corridors and a lot of the high rise buildings in Waikiki, like Yacht Harbor Towers and uh, the Waipuna, and I think the Wailana. They all have open exterior quarters, and they're all over 20 stories tall. So they are exempt. And those buildings that have open exterior quarters and the ones who are 10 stories or less are exempt from installing the uh, fire sprinklers. Now, for the rest of the, the high-rise buildings that are over 10, 10 stories or higher, or they have interior enclosed corridors, they have a, ch a choice of installing uh, a fire sprinkler system or passing something called a life safety evaluation. And so you say, well, what's a life safety evaluation? A life safety evaluation is, is a building inspection. And it's done by licensed uh, professionals uh, who are certified to do fire inspections. And so these would be engineers or architects with a special certification. They have to uh, be, uh, and in, in Hawaii, we don't have a, a certified fire safety engineer, but they, the people who do the uh, fire safety evaluations uh, need to know the fire code and the building code and, um, and, and, and basically be uh, familiar with uh, uh, structural issues relating to high-rise buildings. And what, 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 what these uh, licensed professionals are, are supposed to do when they do a life safety evaluation is they go through the building and they look at certain components. And, uh, and there's something uh, that uh, is part of the ordinance. It's called a matrix. And it's a spreadsheet that was developed by the Honolulu Fire Department. And it basically uh, is, is, is a scoring sheet that the licensed professionals use to score these 17 elements. And the 17 elements include things like the height of the building, the construct, well, what kind of material is the building constructed of? Is it drywall? Is it wooden? Is it a wooden building? 
Is it concrete? And it, it talks about, I mean, the things that need to be checked is uh, whether or not uh, the fire alarm system is uh, current or is it outdated? Uh, are there stand pipes in the buildings? And um, you, whether or not the doors have metal closures and whether or not they have louvers in the doors because uh, that is not permitted by the building code. So if you have louvers in your doors, then you'd, you better change them out. And uh, things that, other things that they look at is uh, uh, the uh, elevators and how they're connected to the smoke alarms and the fire alarm system, vertical openings. And these are um, openings, that, uh, you don't see them you, uh, because uh, they, they usually occur inside the, the walls. And this is when uh, a building is constructed and they have to put pipes. And so when they put the pipes into the building, they need to make holes in the floor so that the pipes can, can, they, uh, can uh, fit through the holes and go all the way up. And when they put in the pipes, they, they seal it, they caulk it. But after 30, 40 years, those seals deteriorate. And uh, so those openings around the pipes allow uh, air to uh, rush through. And if there's a fire, it allows the fire to travel up. And so those are of a concern. And so those things are looked for in the life safety evaluation. Another uh, uh, item that uh, they consider is how far is it uh, from the middle of the building uh, to the end, whether or not the buildings have an emergency evacuation plan. And you know, these are all things that the licensed professional uh, is going to be checking on uh, when uh, they come into the building. And, uh, and if, if you get a passing score uh, on the life safety evaluation, then the buildings uh, who pass don't have to put in the fire, uh, uh, the fire sprinkler system. And so that's why it's really, really important for buildings who are over 10 stories and have interior corridors to become very familiar with this matrix. And as I said, there's only 17 items on it. It is on the fire department website. And so, you know, I urge everybody who is connected uh, to an association that is over 10 stories and has interior corridors and doesn't have a fire sprinkler system to look at that matrix on the fire department's website and become familiar with the 17 items that are listed there and then to take that matrix and walk through their own building and see how, how they score. Because the, the scoring and the method of scoring is written into the spreadsheet. So you can kind of you know, do it yourself and, and, and do a self-test to see how, 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 how well you do. Or you can look at the matrix and figure, oh my goodness, I don't have, we don't have doors with metal closures. And that's required. I mean, if you don't have them, they, they give you minus points. And so, so that would be an easy fix. That's cheaper than putting in sprinklers, changing out your, your doors, putting in metal closures. And the reason why the metal closures are so important is because when a fire starts, you want all the doors to be shut. That means there's doors to the units, the doors to the end of the corridors, because that way the fire cannot travel. And, uh, and in the Marco Polo situation, Although, you know, uh, most people have not read the whole report, what we've read in the newspapers said that one of the reasons why that fire traveled so quickly is the fact that the doors were left open. Unit doors were left open. The door where the fire started uh, was left open. The, uh, the hallway door, uh, the corridor door was left open. And uh, we know that the Marco Polo had huge vertical openings. That's why the fire traveled upwards. And so the reason for the life safety evaluation is to educate building owners. Uh, and that means the board of directors and the people who live in the buildings, they need to be uh, familiar with what, you know, what is in their building that uh, can uh, make, you know, uh, to make, make a fire uh, situation more dangerous. And we're finding out, you know, in retrospect, unfortunately, that at the Marco Polo, the, the, the doors there had louvers in them, which are um, in violation of the build, building code. But anyway, they had louvers. So if you have louvers on your door, you got to make sure you change them out. And in, in, in the Marco Polo situation, they had huge vertical openings. And 
the, the doors to the units and the corridors were not shut, and that means that there probably weren't metal closures. Metal closures on a door means that door will automatically shut. It won't stay open. And so, you know, it's so in order, and, and the um, licensed professionals uh, can, will only be charging you for the time that they spend in your unit. And that's another reason why you want to become familiar with the, the matrix, because the matrix uh, tells you what they're going to be looking at. And if you know ahead of time, you can train your staff and have uh, paperwork ready, including the building plans and any uh, documentation regarding uh, previous inspections of uh, plumbing, any, any, uh, uh, any repairs that you did to the plumbing or to uh, standpipes or to your elevators. And in fact, in fact, most buildings, most buildings have in their uh, reserves elevator renovations and they've been putting it off because it's a huge it's a, it's usually a huge item for uh uh repairs it's always several millions of dollars but now and, and most associations have this in their reserve anyway if you and if you've been putting it off now is the time to do the elevator renovations because when you do the elevator renovations you have to upgrade your fire alarm system and your smoke detectors and that will give you all plus points plus your standpipes have to be in working order. And so if you, if you do that, which is on your, your budget and reserves schedule anyway, then it, it, it will go a long ways to help you uh, get a passing score. And, 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 and it's money that you have socked away anyway, so it's not like it's going to mean a special assessment uh, for your owners. It's money that you know, you've been setting aside. Now is the time to spend it because it will help you get a passing score uh, in the life safety evaluation and it may help you so that you don't have to install uh, fire sprinklers, which is going to cost your association millions of dollars. Now when we come back, uh, we're going to be taking a break in a few minutes, but when we come back, uh, I will be talking about some changes to the original ordinance 18 uh, 14 that was uh, adopted in or passed in May on May 3rd 2018 uh, that bill is uh, bill 96 and it passed out of the City Council at a hearing uh, at a City Council meeting held yesterday and it was it, it was way into the evening I think we, we it, when it finally passed when they finally took the vote it was 730 uh, 730 uh, last night and now it's going to go to the mayor, and when the mayor signs it, that uh, ordinance will become law, and uh, that means that we probably won't have any more changes or updates to the fire safety uh, ordinance, at least for another six months. And so now uh, we're going to take a break, and we will be back in uh, one minute, and we will be talking about uh, the amendments that came about because of Bill 96, which was passed by the City Council last night. Aloha, I'm Lauren Pear, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming. Salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Okay, welcome back to Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura. I'm your host today. 
and we're talking about updates to the fire safety ordinance and specifically we're going to talk about bill 96 which was passed by the city council yesterday and bill 96 uh, was an amendment uh, to the fire safety ordinance that was passed in may 3rd 2018 and let me just tell you one of the biggest changes and 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 we went round and round when the list first came out about the buildings that were subject to the ordinance, uh, the city and the fire department, they had calls about people saying, why am I on the list? Or why aren't I on the list? Or how come I'm on the list? And, and you have me down for interior quarters, and I don't have interior quarters. Or why are we on the list? Because we're under 75 uh, feet. We should be you know, in that category of under 10 stories. And so you know, the city and the fire department uh, went round and round, and uh, during Bill 96, we had no less than four lists prepared by the fire department and the city department of planning and permitting, and uh, the list went up and down. First, we had 350, it went up to almost 400, then it came back down, uh, you know, so, and everybody is looking at the list, and we had people calling in and saying, why am I on the list? I have sprinklers, I shouldn't even be on the list, or, why am, I, why, why am I on the list and with, uh, you know, interior corridors when I don't have interior corridors? So as of last night, and uh, I was told by the fire department that they sent people, they sent their inspectors to actually look at buildings that were claiming that they should be in the lower category or that they had sprinklers installed, they shouldn't be on the list at all. And so, so this list of 377 buildings that are, is attached to Bill 96, which is on the city website, constitutes, at, as far as everybody is concerned, a pretty accurate list of buildings uh, that the law applies to. And what this means is that the, the buildings that are listed, and they're listed according to how tall they are, so the, people, the, the buildings that are the first on the list are the tallest ones, the ones that are 40 stories and then 39 and so it goes all the way down to I think eight stories and and then there are columns that say whether they have interior corridors or exterior corridors it also says when the uh, buildings were built and and, and um, so this is this is and and you know based on what we've seen and based on the concerns that we we heard from people we feel that this is a pretty good list but because we know from past experience that the list is, 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 is an ever-changing uh, target, the, if, if the list is updated by adding or subtracting buildings or changing the, uh, the information regarding the buildings, the current list is going to appear on the uh, fire department website. So the, uh, the list that appears on the fire department website is probably the most accurate. And so if you think that you should be subject to the law, or you, you, you're wondering, you know, why you're on the list and you're, you shouldn't be. You can find out by going to the uh, the uh, fire department website and checking checking that website. And as of the, uh, like I said, there's an updated list that's attached to Bill 96 that was passed last night, and it has 377 buildings. Of those 377 buildings, 159. So about half, or less than half, uh, are required to either install a fire uh, sprinkler system or get a passing score on the life safety evaluation. That means 159 buildings have interior corridors and they're 10 stories or above. And that means that they're the ones that are required to put in a fire sprinkler unless they get a, uh, pa a passing score on the life safety evaluation. The one change that was made, and this is one that a lot of buildings asked for, they said, oh, you know, rather than go through the hassle of going through a life safety evaluation, because it's really scary, we don't know what it, what it entails, and it might cost us a million trillion dollars, we, we're just going to put in the sprinklers. You know, we, we just don't want to fool around. We want to put in the sprinklers. We don't want to do the life safety evaluation. So Bill 96, uh, allows you to do that. If a building says, okay, okay, we give up, we're going to put in the fire sprinkler system. We're going to spend the millions of dollars 
and put in the fire sprinkler system. They have to tell the fire department that that's what they're going to do, and they have to apply for a permit with the uh, city and county of Honolulu within two years after telling the fire department that they're going to do that. And um, because it, it takes a while to you know, get the plans and specs and find a contractor, and that's why two years is the limit. But uh, two years, uh, if they do that, they do not have to do uh, the life safety evaluation. And an another thing that came out is because this list kept changing, and in, in some cases, some buildings didn't even know that they were subject to the law uh, until the Bill 96 came about, and, and they heard rumors that th there was this new list, and maybe they, they ought to look at it. And so the buildings that, that were put on the list for the first time, and, th and this is a list that's attached to Bill 96, if they were on no other list, Prior uh, to you know this uh, the uh, 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 applicability of the law, then they have a longer time. The original the the people who were on the original lists, the lists that were attached to the ordinance that passed in 2018, the deadlines in that ordinance said that within three years of May 3, 2018, you had to have a life safety evaluation done. And most people, most buildings probably are not going to pass, so they have to do repairs, and then they have six years from May 3, 2018, to get a passing score on the life safety evaluation. So those are the, 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 the there are two important deadlines in the ordinance, the three year to have a life safety evaluation done, and the six years to actually get a passing score. But for the buildings who never were on any list, and they all of a sudden end up on this list that's attached to Bill 96, it's not fair for them, you know, because here we are, we're coming up against a one-year anniversary on the ordinance. So their deadlines, their three- and six-year deadlines, will start from the time the mayor signs Bill 96. And that's only fair because they only just recently found out that they are subject to this law. Okay, another thing that this uh, Bill 96 does, it, al it allows the licensed professionals who do the, the uh, life safety evaluation to use association staff to help them get the information. And that means counting smoke detectors. And this is something that the uh, association staff can do and provide that information uh, to the uh, licensed professional so that you're not you know, being charged a licensed professional's time to check the smoke detectors and the fire alarm system uh, in the building and to check for metal closures on uh, the unit doors and on the corridor doors. Another thing that, uh, that an important change is on the matrix, and this is the scoring sheet, there's a factor called mobility. And we went round and round and round and round uh, with the fire department because you know they they wouldn't give a definitive answer. And then one of the people, you know, one of the the stakeholders, you know, basically said, you know, did their research and said, you know, the the the, the guidelines that you guys use, the fire department used to come up with the mobility uh, factor, they got it from nursing homes, uh, you know, for for people, you know, have mobility issues. But people who live in residential condominiums, they usually don't have mobility issues. This is being able to move around. And if you have mobility issues, you have somebody taking care of you. And so that means that you have assistance in getting in and out of the building. But anyway, you know, because this was such, so controversial and it was like a moving target, the licensed professional says, well, how are we going to know? We're going to knock on every door and ask, ask them, are you able to get out of the building or do you need help? And so. So, so th this is what uh, th this is the rule that we came up with: the mobility factor on the life safety evaluation. All high-rise buildings who are have to go through a life safety evaluation are going to be given a 1.5 uh, point, if and only if, and they have to have two things: they have to have a emergency evacuation plan. And that could be just a chart showing how you get out of the building. But they have to have a written plan, and they have to give it to the licensed professional. And the second thing you have to do is you have to have a list of vulnerable people who live in your building 
and their unit numbers. That information is all, that requirement is already required by the building code and associations are supposed to have this list of vulnerable people in the box for the, uh, the fire, the first responders is a key for the first responders and that list is supposed to be there. Now under the fire safety ordinance, that list of people who are vulnerable and may have uh, issues or may need assistance to get out of the building, they got to be on a list and that list has to be given to the licensed professional when they come in to do the life safety evaluation. And that list has to be current. So what I suggest that people do is they, you know, you, you put a date on the name of the, on the list. And, you know, a lot of people, in, in, you know, they're, they're, they feel shame. So they're, they're not going to tell you. If you say, you know, I, I, I'm, I, the fire department's making it through this list of people who have trouble getting out of the, uh, who need assistance getting out of the building. And so if you need assistance, then you need to let us know so that we can put your name on this list. And so some, some people, you know, feel shame. They're not going to give you their name. And so you have to, you know, put out the word saying, hey, we need to do this. So if your neighbor needs assistance, give us the name and tell us the unit number so that we can put them on our list so that we can give it to the fire department. And we have to do this, uh, you know, uh, at the time of the life safety. And the best thing about the Bill 96 is for the first three years, because this is a huge undertaking, this is a huge undertaking affecting uh, over 300 buildings in, in, in the city and county of Honolulu and at least 160 high-rise buildings. And so, yes, it, on a going forward basis, we're going to have glitches. So the city council has mandated that every six months, the fire department has to come and report about the status of impl implementation and the number of appeals and what kind of issues are people grumbling about. And the associations and the licensed professionals also have an opportunity to come to the city council and to share their experiences and, and, and to, to grumble. I mean, if there are issues that need to be addressed for the first three years, every six months, there's going to be a review by the city. And this is to ensure that on a going forward basis, that you know, after three years, we should probably have all the glitches addressed, hopefully, so that this system can then move forward uh, to make our buildings uh, safer, not only for the residents uh, who live there, but for the uh, first responders who have to come and help uh, the residents in case of fire or tornado or any type of, you know, a, an emergency uh, where they have to uh, uh, interact with the condo owners. So if anybody has any questions, I mean, they could call the fire, they should call the fire department. The fire department has said that they are uh, ready and willing to answer any questions. They are gonna have a website that has a list of the buildings. They're gonna have information on material about life safety evaluation. They have the matrix to show you the 17 items that are gonna be scored. And so I urge everyone who has questions about the life safety evaluation or the fire safety ordinance to go to the Honolulu Fire Department website and that, that is a, a huge, that's going to be a huge resource uh, to help you. And next week, what we're going to have on Condo Insider, I hope you will join us next week, is the Neighborhood Commission. The elections start on April 26th. The ballots go out. So uh, the, the Neighborhood Commission is going to be talking about how you vote and how you can elect your Neighborhood Commission. So please join us next week for another episode of Condo Insider. Thank you and mahalo.